Hello, my name is Ryan from Gold Leaf Scientific, and I'm here today to talk about our glass reactors. So one of the things you'll come to find out is that reactors are very versatile machines. They have um, a million different kinds of uses for them. Um, I've given a brief um, itemized list of uses below, but we'll go into more detail on the different uses uh, in, further along in the video. So reactors are machines that allow you to control the temperature and the agitation of your sample. Let's walk through some of the different parts on it. So if you'll notice, we have three layers on the body of the reactor. The innermost layer is where you would put your material. The middle layer is where you would circulate some fluid, which would be connected to your external heating or a cooling circulation device. And the outer layer is a vacuum jacketed. And because there is a vacuum in this layer here, um, there is very little heat loss and it's insulated really well. Um, now, if you notice down here, we have a drain section, which allows a real easy and convenient drain. Um, we have um, a stir right here. And if you notice this section right here is a condenser. And this is called a reflux condenser. And basically what happens is if you have anything in your in the body of your reactor, uh, like solvents or anything like that, and as you're heating, uh, heating that up, um, it's going to start to uh, pressurize the reactor body. And so to relieve that pressure, what you do is you use this reactor uh, or this condenser right here. And this condenses any vapor or any gases or anything in your in your system and relieves the internal pressure. Now, if you'll notice over to the left here, or to the right here, I'm sorry, uh, we have this guy right here. This is called an addition of funnel. So um, if you wanted to add any kind of more liquids, any other kind of material to your mix, you could use this and you could use this valve right here to precisely add in a small amount. This is a big uh, a material inlet port. Basically, you could unscrew this cap and you could add stuff to it. This is a stir, uh, which connects to a big overhead stir right here. So you could uh, you could stir up some pretty viscous samples. This is a um, thermocouple right here. This measures the temperature of your inner contents of your sample. This one right here in the back is an inlet valve. So this is if you wanted to pull vacuum or to add something to your system. Uh, you could use this one right here. It has the valve and everything. And of course, this connects over to your reflux condenser and stuff over here. Now we have a couple different types of reactors here. The one over to the left is an electric lift reactor. And the thing that makes this special is that it's able to separate both the top cap part, uh, which has the condenser and all that sort of stuff connected to it, away from the body of the reactor. And the reason this is so so nice is that you're able to easily get inside there and pull in, uh, or I'm sorry, remove or add uh, any kind of solids really easily. The traditional reactor over here to the right, um, if you wanted to add or remove any kind of liquids, it's really easy. It has drain valves and inlet valves. But if you wanted to add any kind of solids, you're pretty much stuck to just a little um, material port that's on the top. It's about maybe two to three inches in diameter. Uh, so it's very inconvenient to add or remove any kind of solids from that. And that's really why this electric lift reactor is so special. The traditional reactors will take about 20 minutes or so to remove those two pieces. So it makes it very inconvenient to uh, do any kind of extraction with solids. On the other hand, the electric lift reactor is easy to do that. And because of that, it makes it easy to do a solid to liquid extraction. So if you want to do a cannabinoid extraction or any kind of, you know, leafs material, any, anything like that, it'll work fantastic. 
And one of the things that makes this system really special is that because it has a um, vacuum jacketed layer um, and it's able to you know, separate the two pieces, uh, you're able to do a cryo extraction fairly easily. Now with ethanol, cryo extraction is important because if you could reduce the temperature of your solvent that you use to extract with enough, you could basically get to the point um, where you're not dissolving any kind of waxes or anything, or very minimally. Um, and that makes it so that you don't have to do a winterization de-waxing process. If you were to get any kind of, you know, a small amount of waxes or anything in your extraction, uh, it has built-in filters that you could get um, so you could filter it when you actually drain it out. The reactors will also come with uh, material bags. Uh, you could just throw all your material into a bag and then just put the bag inside the reactor itself. And this makes it real easy to remove uh, everything from, your, uh, from the reactor. The triple jacketing um, not only allows for really good vacuum insulation, but it allows you to be able to see the inner contents um, the whole time so it's not going to freeze over it's not going to fog up or anything like that and with cryo extraction it tends to be a little bit more selective and not as aggressive and with that your yields um, will tend to be a little bit less um, and to kind of combat that we've introduced an ultrasonic agitation system um, and basically what this allows is um, you get an increase of yield by keeping your uh, residence time short. And basically your residence time is just the time that your solvent is in contact with your plant material. The ultrasonic basically breaks the, uh, the trichomes and allows the solvent to dissolve the inner contents really easily. But it's gentle enough that it shouldn't... Um, break the cell walls of the plant material and therefore release the chlorophyll or the other uh, compounds that would tend to uh, give a lot more color to your extract. So basically you're going to get a really nice looking extract and your yield is not going to be compromised. At least here in California um, they've ruled that ethanol is if you use it to extract with is uh, a non-volatile solvent and therefore because it's non-volatile you could use that um, in your extraction and would be fully compliant. The only caveat to that is that you would have to make sure that your material um, at least for safety's sake, safety's sake is um, fully dried before you remove it from the machine. So after you do your complete extraction and you have your alcohol soaked in your plant material, um, you would have to distill out the alcohol and make sure that that plant material is, you know, completely dry and not non-flammable when it comes out of that machine. And we could do that by basically heating up uh, an inert gas and flushing it through the, the body of the reactor and that will distill away the, um, the alcohol and carry it on to the condenser section where it'll condense and you could reuse the alcohol. Something to kind of keep in mind while you're doing your extraction is that it's gonna take some time for your ethanol to, to get down to temperature. Um, if you have a bunch of ethanol that's all pre-cooled, then you don't really have to worry about this so much. But if you were only to have one reactor, basically you would have to fill that reactor up, let the, um, you know, cool it down sufficiently, um, then add your plant material to it. And that could take, uh, that can take quite a bit of time. So what you could do basically is you could add um, another reactor. Uh, and what I would recommend is using the, um, the traditional reactor, the non-electric lift. Um, and you could use that one to to cool your solvent and then you could use an electric lift reactor to do your actual extraction. This saves time and keeps your uh, processing flowing. Another kind of thought is that after you're done with your cryo extraction you could use your um, spent 
alcohol that's really cold um, to pre-chill some of your other processing. Glass reactors are also great for production size liquid to liquid extractions. It's essentially a large separatory funnel, but you have the ability to control the temperature of the inner contents, the agitation via overhead stir, and instead of burping or releasing any kind of gas or pressure on the inside, you could just use the reflux condenser to achieve that. This makes it the perfect machine for doing hexane saline washes, carbon scrubs, mixing absorbents, uh, kind of any, doing any kind of uh, liquid to liquid uh, chromatography procedures. When it comes to chemical reactions, reactors are the ideal machines. That's because they allow you to control the temperature, the agitation, and adding any kind of reactants to with a great degree of uh, control and precision. And that allows you to conduct tests and do any kind of procedure and scale up from bench top all the way up into industrial size manufacturing. Reactors also allow you to precisely heat or cool a large volume. And with this comes a lot of different uses. For instance, those that use a wiped film machine often have to degas their material before they throw it in the machine. And with this reactor, you could degas your whole um, your whole batch in one go. You can also cool the inner contents as low as needed for as long as needed, and this allow you to do winterization or dewaxing. And generally, if you're going to be um, extracting or doing any kind of um, procedures with solids, then you're going to want a, a triple jacketed electric lift style reactor. And if you're doing work just exclusively with liquids, then you could get away with just using the double jacket. This way, you will always have a, a vacuum jacketing that you could use, and that keeps it uh, insulated, um, and there's no kind of fogging. You could always view the inner contents really easily. And because these glasses are, because the reactors are made of glass uh, borosilicate to be exact, you could basically um, you can go as low as you could possibly imagine. The only point to watch out with that is that uh, you can't just splash any really super cold solvent or anything in there. Um, any kind of really quick temperature changes uh, could cause cracking. And I think the best configuration with the reactors is to have both an electric lift style reactor and the traditional style reactor. And then if you daisy chain them together, you get the benefits of both. And with precision control of your temperature and your agitation, this allows you to um, produce very large crystals. If you have a chiller that, that allows you to control the ramp rates, and if you optimize these rates, you have the potential to grow extremely large and pure crystals. Reactors can also easily serve as distillation devices. All that we really need to do is reconfigure the condenser, add some receiver flasks, the cart and a few connector pieces, and we're in business. This has the ability to do agitation, so it could essentially serve the same purpose as a rotary evaporator. But a rotary evaporator tends to be quite fast in comparison, roughly about 1.5 to 2x the speed. And the reactor will also need some type of heating device. So a recirculating heater will do the trick. And of course, you're going to need a chiller for your condenser to condense all your solvent. And another thing to consider is that if you choose to use the reactor as a distillation device, you won't be able to use it for any other procedures. So having a standalone rotary evaporator will definitely help keep your processing volume up and your processing times down. But if you wanted to use your reactor for distillation, all you need to do is just add the um, distillation add-on parts to it, which is just the little cart and receiver flask, like uh, over to the right, right here in pink. Another thing that you could do with these reactors is do a steam distillation. 
So you could extract uh, terpenes on a very large scale with this machine. And essentially what you would do is you'd put your material up in the body of the reactor. Um, you would have like a, like a mantle uh, with a boiling flask and you steam up material up through the flask that actually goes through the drain valve in the bottom. Um, we have connector pieces to make it all airtight and everything. It steams up through the material, goes up to the condenser where it condenses. Once you've collected a good amount of that condensate, you let it sit. The terpenes will float to the top. Then you can pipette them off or drain off the water. This should allow you to collect some really fresh and tasty terps. And of course, the material that's inside of the reactor that you've extracted the terpenes from, you could always do a cannabinoid extraction again from it. It'll be a little bit wet from the steam, or I should say damp, but if you let it sit out for a few hours, it should dry up. So when it comes to an extraction, um, a big um, detail to that is gonna be um, the density of your material. So for instance, flour is gonna be really uh, sparse, loose, um, isn't gonna be packed very tightly. Um, and in that case, it could be as low as 36 grams per liter. Whereas trim, uh, you know, there's very, there's a lot less space in between the, the bits and whatnot. Um, it's a lot denser. And so it could be as high as 225 or even more grams per liter. And that has a significant effect on the holding capacity of the machine itself. Uh, basically, 10 liter reactors could hold around 2,000 grams of, uh, of trim. Uh, 20 liters reactor hold a little over 4,000. Um, and the 50 liter reactor could do uh, almost uh, 11,000 um, grams of trim. With each wash taking roughly 20 minutes, it stands that you could get through three washes in an hour. At cryo temperatures, you're going to need three washes, whereas with room temperature, you could probably get away with just two. Although you could get our ultrasonic agitation system, and that'll definitely reduce the difference between the two. But we've used three washes to estimate the figures below. The middle row on the bottom table is the amount of trim processed per hour. And the bottom row is the amount of oil uh, process or uh, yielded per hour. Again, this is uh, with three washes. With our continued innovation in glass reactors, such as electric lift and ultrasonic agitation, you can cover all the bases with your extraction, processing, or purification, and can do so all in one machine. This is Ryan from Gold Leaf Scientific signing off. If you have any questions or comments, you could write them in the comments or below, or you could write us an email. And make sure to subscribe for more videos. And lastly, check out our website for more info.